Hello Leo and welcome to your April 2024 tarot card reading. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Jane. Welcome to April 2024, which is a very big month astrologically. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at both the tarot predictions and mix it with a lot of astrology here for you. So as you're choosing which sign to watch, you may want to start off with your sun sign or your rising sign. And if you would like to have that third perspective, your moon sign is also quite beneficial as well. So let's go ahead and jump right into the reading and I'll see you guys in just a sec. Hello Leo and welcome to your April 2024 tarot card reading. Let's go ahead and get started here with a card from my animal spirit deck. What is it that Leo needs to know for April? Okay, trust the great mystery. So there might actually be some pretty big question marks in front of you right now. <laughs> like you may have some pretty ambitious goals that you're looking at and saying, how the heck am I ever gonna, am I ever gonna do that? But I honestly think there's such a strong intuitive current right now that even though you may not have exact steps in mind, you at least can intuit the next step. And I think that's the most important thing. Um, there are going to be some twists and turns in your story, especially as we have Pluto opposite from you, um, still kind of oscillating a little bit this year. So, you know, there's just a lot of this kind of deep desire for evolution, a deep desire to, take on a whole new chapter after 15 years of this, you know, Pluto and Capricorn thing, but it's all not entirely clear. Now you may be very clear about what you want. It's really the question is how do I get it or how do I get there? But honestly, it's a one step in front of the other type of deal. You do have a lot of eighth house activity right now. We still have Venus in there for the next few days. Um, we have Mars coming into this conjunction with Saturn, which means that this is a great time, especially the first week of April is a great time to just get your stuff organized, get things kind of structured in a way that, you know, is going to be beneficial for you, you know, doing even little things like answering emails and kind of step into that more executive type of role in your own life and kind of getting on top of the things that might be weighing you down a little bit is going to be really, really beneficial for you. And you'll thank yourself in the months to come that you took the time to do that. Okay. So take a look. Let's take a look at the moon card that wants to come out for Leo for April. Don't let your past hold you back. Um, Given that April begins with an eclipse in Aries on the 8th, this is ninth house activity. And we know that ninth house is a deeply spiritual house. And there's a lot of expansion that goes on in this house. And it doesn't really like to get bogged down in matters of the past. It doesn't like to be held back. So this is a conscious choice though, you know, embracing the mystery is a lot different than the fact that there is a mystery like, okay, yeah. So maybe you don't really know what the future is going to hold, or you don't know exactly how things are going to come together. That's normal, right? That's just real life, but it's a matter of, are you going to let that debilitate you or not? Are you going to embrace it and jump into the adventure or are you going to shrink and shy away? But you can't let your past hold you back your past whether it was a circumstance, whether it was a relationship, whether it was a certain pattern that you had. Um, I mean, it can continue. That's a choice that you can make. You can continue to keep everything the same. And I think being a fixed sign, there's a strong tendency to want to do that, right? All the fixed signs have to really contend with an element of stubbornness. Um, but you don't, have to, right? You can change. And I think astrologically, you are probably really feeling that you do want the course of your life to change and evolve in some significant way. So don't let your past hold you back. Um, it's a matter of choice. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look here at 
the tarot cards. What is it that Leo needs to know for April? Okay. That eight of coins has been hit. It always hits really hard for me when it comes out because to me, it feels like the answer to so many problems. It's like, well, just get to work, you know? And I don't mean to minimize the work or the amount of work or the type of work, but really that is the answer. And the eight of coins is about focus and determination, but really like with this, just like with everything else, you have to decide to dedicate yourself to whatever this is. Now the eight of coins is probably a project that you genuinely care about. There's potential for income. So there might be a money connection going on. Usually when we have eighth house transits, money is a concern. We do like to think about that. Um, so you might be thinking of additional revenue streams or going after that bigger job or relocating, or maybe you do have a bit of a side hustle or you're trying to find a way to earn more income, you know, whatever the case is, but it's not enough to just think about it. And I think the eight of coins is such a perfect reminder. It's like, okay, you can think about it all day long, but if all you do is think about it, or if all you do is talk about it and nothing actually gets done, then it's all completely useless. So you have to act actually get your hands dirty, get your hands in the clay and actually do something. And when I look at this emperor card, I feel that you are going to be empowered to do that, that there is this thing that is rising up within you, awakening and saying, okay, now is my time. Especially if you have felt stagnant or if you have felt like things haven't really changed. Um, now this is going to depend on your own individual chart and I'm not trying to lump all the Leos together. Uh, we're all having obviously our own individualized experiences, but I will say that there have been many, many people of all Zodiac signs that kept thinking like, okay, the change is coming. We're going to make it. We're going to take these big leaps. And then even if you did take a big leap, it didn't even really kind of be what you thought it was going to be. It, it wasn't going to, it didn't carry you the way you thought it was going to carry you. So whether you took a big chance in the past few years or not, whether you did something big and dramatic or not, either way, the answer to where it is you want to go is found in the eight of coins. And the emperor is that empowerment to do that. And the queen of coins feels like the organization. Now the queen of coins, I always have to point out She's like my gardener, and I say this all the time, so sorry if you are a repeat viewer. You've probably heard me say it a million times over the years, but this is really about your environment and paying attention to the space in which you're operating. So if you have a goal, but your environment is not conducive to the growth of that goal, there are things environmentally that you're gonna need to take care of because it's not enough to just plant a seed. You have to make sure that seed is getting watered and make sure it's getting sunlight and make sure that the pH of the soil is proper and make sure that you don't have weeds choking it. You know, you have to make sure that it's taken care of. So your dreams are like seeds and the environment is extremely relevant to its success. So if there is some kind of cleaning up you need to do regarding your environment and the people around whom you surround yourself, now is a great time to do that during eclipses, okay? And as the sun comes through Aries, it's gonna make its way into Taurus. You know, this is a really potent time for you, Leo, especially having the sun exalted, okay? The sun does, you know, when the sun is strong, that's good for everyone, but it's especially good for Leo, also Aries, but you, because it's your ruling planet. Okay. So we like it when the sun is strong and there does seem to be kind of an, a soul's ambition here really bubbling up. Okay. But it's not all, there's no talk involved here. This is not a time to talk about stuff. This is a time for implementation. And as we make our way from Aries into Taurus near the end of April, Taurus, which is an earth sign, is all about implementation and application. 
So it's great to have inspiration, but if you don't do anything with it, it's again, pointless. All right. So we want to be implementing and applying ourselves. kind of feeling like the king of coins is someone else i think because you're coming off real top dog like you're coming off as the emperor all right and everything else is kind of trickling down from here i feel like the king of coins now it could be an element of you or like an aspect of you as well similar to the queen of coins but i am feeling like this is someone that you really trust maybe there's a professional connection that you have or some kind of monetary connection this is someone you're gonna have to communicate with them with that gemini card in the middle with the lovers okay you're gonna have to communicate and talk and kind of make demands as i look at the emperor i, I don't see the emperor being like, hey, you know, I'm just wondering if maybe you could do this. And like, no, it's like, no, you need to do this. It's more demands or commands, if you will. I feel like this person is quote unquote working for you. I don't know what that means. I don't know why that message is coming to me right now, but I feel like this person is working for you or with you, or like there's something on their shoulders, like you're relying on them. Okay but I, I think they're perfectly capable i'm not getting any bad vibes but the thing with the king of coins is that he can be very slow and i don't see an emperor being very slow and if there is some kind of relational thing going on this is something that you're going to have to get your hands dirty with and start making some phone calls and start you know kind of pushing other people a little bit not obnoxiously obviously but you know, especially if you actually have hired this person or you are working with them or they are a partner, maybe a romantic partner or a business partner of some kind, right? If there are certain expectations that are not being met, maybe you really do need to sit down and talk about it because it's impacting your ability to do what your eight of coins is needing you to do. It's distracting. It's pulling you away. And there are choices involved. And I, I think Leo, like you don't want to sit around and wait for someone else to have to make a choice or have to make a decision, right? Because you'd rather, what's well, your life? You want to make a decision about your life now. So it kind of, it's hard when you're reliant upon someone else. Um, with the eclipses, okay, because we have the full moon eclipse on, well, the full moon eclipse we had on March 25th. And then we have the, have the new moon eclipse in Aries on April 8th. Aries and Libra are the signs in which these are happening. So there might be some kind of a relationship that either needs to be altered or changed or modified or some type of an agreement or contract that needs to be renegotiated. All right, because if it's hindering your ability if it's not a healthy thing for the environment, you are going to have to do something about it. And you are going to have to step in the driver's seat, you know, and you're going to have to start making those demands because this is for your dream nine of cups. This is the card of wishes coming true. And if you're, if what you're trying to do is not let your past hold you back and you genuinely are trying to move on and, kind of build that new life and create that new path for yourself. You cannot be sitting around and waiting for someone else. If your wishes coming true are dependent on their speed, like something has to change. There has to be a reevaluation or something. And I don't think this is a bad person. Like I say, I don't think that there's anything wrong with it. It's just, they're your dreams. They're not their dreams. And they can't care about your dreams as much as you because they're yours. All right. So you got to kind of take, take the reins and take that responsibility. And if something isn't working or if someone's moving too slow or whatever it is, you're, you're going to have to figure out what to do about that. Now, Mercury is retrograde in Aries. 
the eclipse is conjunct Chiron. It's a very powerful eclipse on the 8th. Venus is also in, in Aries, a lot of Aryan energy, a lot of Piscean energy, which means you might be just really looking for a fresh start and you might need to cut ties. And that might be scary because again, trust the great mystery, like, but the mystery can be very scary. The mystery can feel like a big risk and you might be a little risk averse. But I think if you trust the risk and you trust the mystery, you are going to be more likely to have your dreams come true the way you ultimately wanted. Okay. Last row for Leo. What is it that you need to know here? Man, a lot of court cards. There's definitely something money related going on. We've got a Taurus card. We've got a Scorpio card and you've got a couple, you know, eighth house placements happening. Wow. A lot of court cards. This is crazy. It's been a long time since I've had a reading with this many. Good news is it's Kings and Queens, which is an indicator of maturity and, you know, just good people in general. So I really don't think you're going to be dealing with negative people. Um, I feel like something good is going to come in. There's an option. There's, there's something positive for you. For, for some, it might be romantic. That's always an option. When we have ninth house activity, it's a very auspicious placement. This is actually a really fortunate situation you have going on to have Aries in the ninth and the sun exalted in the ninth. It's just positive all around in terms of good luck, good fortune, and that kind of thing. And I do see a lot of like, I guess we could call it like an upswing. I do see a lot of upswings that happen when we have astrological environment like this. I'm not saying everything in your life is going perfectly. Okay. But there's potential. And that's the thing about the ACE. It's, it's great. An ACE is wonderful, but it is just a potential. And you have to remember that it's just a potential. Okay. But the King of Cups, the Queen of Cups, there does seem to be a compatibility. The fact that we have a King and Queen of Cups and a King and Queen of Coins suggests compatibility. It suggests that this is someone that you can be on the same wavelength with. Now, I don't think the King of Cups is the same as the King of Coins. I'm feeling like these are two very distinct people. And I'm kind of favoring the King of Cups in this particular instance, simply because he's aligned here with the Ace of Cups like this. I feel like the Ace of Cups is kind of where Leo's heart wants to be. I am feeling that you're kind of tapping more into the Queen energy because this one feels more connected to the Emperor to me. Um, it feels like Leo, on one hand, this is you being really assertive and being really, you know, commanding. And then on the other hand, there's a really nice balance of receptivity with the feminine queen energy. So that's beautiful with the lovers in the middle, with the masculine and feminine both being represented. So I feel like you internally, Leo, are quite balanced. Okay. And the feminine energy here with the queen of cups goes so well with trust the great mystery, because this is the intuitive, this is a cancerian energy. So it's intuitive, it's, it's in tune and it's trusting, but it is also highly intelligent, like emotionally intelligent. Please trust your spidey senses this month, Leo. I don't think you can go wrong when you just take a minute to ask yourself, okay, how am I feeling? How does this person make me feel? And when I say, how does it make me feel? Like, for example, let's say this is a romantic connection. I mean, if you are off the charts with butterflies, that might be something to just kind of take a breath and a breather on and just kind of take a step back, if you will. Um, I'm not telling you to chase all the feelings. Okay. I think it's better for you to feel calm. It's better for you to feel collected than it is for you to just be running amok. Okay. <laughs> running amok, chasing butterflies all the time. But what I like about the King of Cups is this one does offer some sense of stability, 
Both of these are quite stable, but for some reason, this one feels disconnected. I can't really quite explain why other than it's kind of a weird connection with the queen where this one is directly aligned. So you may have multiple individuals that you're working with, talking with, whatever. One is not working and the other one makes you feel really safe, makes you feel assured and validated. That's probably going to be the better bet. That's going to be the one that you likely can develop something more substantial with. Now it does not have to be romantic, although it could be with that ace of cups. So if you are out there meeting people in a romantic context or a professional context, please still pay attention to what's going on inside. Okay. Let's see if we can get, get a little bit more information. So we're going to pull out a bunch of new cards. And for those of you who are new, the cards we're about to pull out other cards we will cover in the comprehensive reading. And the link for that will be found in both the description box and the comment thread down below. So if you want to join me, you are absolutely more than welcome. So let's take a look here and see what comes through. Starting with the eight of coins, what else does Leo need to know for the eight of coins? Two of swords, queen of swords. page empress loving this is what i mean perfect balance masculine and feminine coming out you do seem very balanced another queen of queen of cups okay that makes me feel really validated that it's you because my initial response was the emperor was you and now okay so that that makes me feel better okay and then four of cups high priestess Knight of Coins. There's nothing passive this month, Leo. Yeah, see, exactly. I knew something was off about that king. Ten of Swords, Five of Cups. Oh my gosh, I knew it. I knew it. Something was off. Strength. <sighs> Testing patience is probably more like it. The Tower, Six of Cups. Seven of Swords. Eight of coins, seven of cups, two of coins, knight of cups, king of swords reversed, ace of coins, the fool, page of cups, two of cups. Okay, I'm really loving this bottom row really, really a lot. Chariot, Four of Swords, there's the Peace of Mind, and the Lovers again. Okay. All right, Leo, this is where we're going to pick up. So if you want to join, you are more than welcome. Thank you again all so much. Have an amazing April, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.